Greetings everyone and welcome to a, another episode of Bubblelog. It is episode 33. I am filming this on the 1st of August um, and this episode is going to be all about the Bendigo Sheep and Wool Show. But to get started, my name is Bobby Owen. I am a knitter and crafter in Victoria, Australia. I live and create on the lands of the Wurundjeri Woi Wurrung people and I would like to acknowledge them and pay my respects to their elders past, present and future. You can also find me on Ravelry under my own name, Bobby Olan, and I am on Instagram at Platypus Knitting. I have been very absent this year, but I'm trying to um, get back into the swing of posting on there. So we'll see how that goes because I am still working a lot and not knitting that much. Um, but yes, I am on Instagram. I'm on Ravelry, I have an Etsy store which is called Knit Stitch Bind and if you ever feel like shouting me a coffee and supporting me um, in making this vlog, uh, you I also have a Ko-fi account. Um, the links to all of that are in the YouTube description below which is where I will also put links to everything that I mention, all the yarns and shops and whatnot that I mention and if I miss anything do please let me know so that I can fix that up. Um, is that all that I have to say in the intro? Yes I believe so. So yes like I said today I am just going to be talking about my experience of going to the sheep and wool show or the Bendigo sheep show um, or Spendigo. <laughs> Uh, yes, this year, 2023. So that took place just over a couple of weeks ago. Last year, I went on the Friday because I um, wanted the quieter crowd. But after that, I heard a lot of people saying that it does feel very different um, going on the Saturday. Um, it's a three-day event, by the way, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Um, and people have said that Saturday is the best day to go. So I decided that this year I would go on the Saturday. Um, so I'm going to be talking through how my day went um, and everything I saw, the people that I met and then at the very end of the show I will go through all of the lovely purchases that I made. Um, again a, another very happy <laughs> spending spree at the show so yes um so before i jump in i did film an intro once i got to the show so we'll have a look at that first morning everyone sorry for the awkward framing of the steering wheel here but um that was the best place i could find to prop up my phone for filming i have just parked at um, the Prince of Wales showgrounds, which is where the Bendigo Sheep Show um, takes place. It is, what time is it? It is almost 9.30. It took me, I don't know, two and a quarter hours of driving to get here. Um, so yeah, I set my alarm for around 6.30, but I snooze a lot. <laughs> I always struggle getting out of bed. Um, so yeah, that was way too early for me to have breakfast, I felt. So um, when I got into Bendigo, I stopped into Guzman and Gomez, which is a um, Mexican fast food place. Got myself a coffee and a brekkie burrito. And I am really looking forward to catching up with um, some online knitting friends who are down from Sydney, um, having a look around. I haven't actually looked at what the schedule of events is for today, which is the Saturday of the show. But um, Last year when I was here, I was more focused on just looking around at everything and I didn't go to any of the scheduled events, but hopefully um, I will be able to fit some of those in today. Uh, in the previous episode as well, I said that there wasn't any yarn that I was looking for um, while I was here, but I 
had thought about it a little bit more and there are a few, couple of things that I do want to keep an eye out for um, but they're not like I have to find these things here today um, they're kind of just would be nice um, if I found them and that is going to be um, DK sock yarn I really like knitting DK socks as you may be aware if you are if you are a longtime viewer there is also a um, a like sleeveless top thing that I want to knit um, the pattern recommends cotton, but I really want to knit it in linen. So I'm going to be keeping an eye out for some linen yarn as well. And then the other thing is just um, if any yarn or possibly even fiber, but probably not because I have barely done any spinning um, in the last few months. But if there's any yarn that um, is of a um more rare or less common sheep braid um that i really like the look of then i always like trying out new um breeds of yarn so last year i got some fin yarn and i haven't knit it yet but it is um I already have a project picked out for it, but yeah, I'll keep, be keeping an eye out today for some other stuff. And I guess that's it. I'm going to eat my breakfast. Then I'm going to message um, the Sydney ladies and let them know I'm here and um, uh, can catch up whenever they're up for it. And yeah, just going to have a great day looking around. See you. If you've watched my episode talking about the previous sheep show, I did mention there that I got a bit lost and didn't really know where I was going. Um, luckily, the layout of the show didn't change. So this year I knew where everything was and um, I was pretty much able to find all of the places that I wanted to go, which was handy. So I started again by going through... Um, some of the tents that they had set up near the parking lot purely because that was closest to where I had parked um, and I had a look through there. Um, there are a lot of... Um, I didn't... I keep... Have, I have in my head, I keep wanting to say like agriculture related stuff, which they do have, but that's not what I mean. I mean that there was a lot of like produce there were like beeswax things and oil things and specialty food things and um yeah just just all sorts of like related industries i think is what i'm trying to say um to um to to, to pharmacy pharmacy <laughs> this is going well <laughs> um yeah to to farming 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 to farming and um, production and small producers, small growers, um, all of that kind of thing, which they had last year again, but um, it was all, it's all very nice to see. Um, so yeah, I went through the tents there. Uh, they, they did also have some um, crafting related things there. Um, and the very first stall I saw was the number one stall that I probably knew in my head that I was going to buy something from. But anyway, we'll talk about that in purchases. This is the first dot point on my list and I am already going off on tangents. So let's see if I could just keep going. Um, yeah, so I did the th tents first because they were close to parking. And then I went to the Woolcraft sheds, um, which have mainly a lot of um, indie, um, yeah, indie producers and makers and things. So there were a lot of bags, a lot of knickknacks, a lot of yarn. Um, there were a lot. There was a fair bit of fiber and people doing spinning demonstrations and things like that. There was also um, one stall that had up. Um, some looms and I think that there was one loom that they had set up so that people could try it out. I didn't give it a go um, but yeah that was nice to see that they had that there so that people 
could try their hand at it and see if they liked it. Um, what else was in the sheds? They also that was also where again the uh, Bendigo wood turners were, um, which is where I bought my um, the bigger nitty knotty last year. Um, I didn't get anything from them this year, but I always love looking at the beautiful things um, that they make in there. That is also where the Hand Weavers and Spinners Guild is set up and they are in the shed where they display all of the Woolcraft entries. And as I mentioned in the previous episode, um, I was really regretting that I had completely let it slip that I had wanted to enter um, one of my own sweaters in there, but that's all right. I did take a few photos um, of things that particular, particularly caught my eye. Um, there were so many beautiful things, but I wasn't wanting to um, spend all my time behind a camera, which is also why I didn't film anything else except for the intro. I wanted to, I was more interested in um, the having the experience of being there. So I did make an effort to try to take photos when I saw things um, that I felt like I wanted to share, but there were probably lots of things that I just didn't think about pulling a camera out for because I was just enjoying myself. But anyway, yes, a lot of, um, a lot of amazing work uh, in that shed there. <sighs> what is next? What did I do after that? I'm pretty sure after the sheds, I went straight into one of the big sheds um, because the fashion, the first fashion show, there were two, there are two fashion shows each day. The first fashion show was about to start. So this one, the morning one was the Woolcraft fashion show. Um, and I, again, I took a few photos there. I didn't take photos of everything, but it was really fun to see, um, all of the creative designs that people had come up with and made. And, um, yeah, obviously there's so much skill out there, which is no surprise to me or to any of you. So I hope you enjoy these pictures, um, that I have taken and, yeah, the other thing that was really fun is that um, after a few things were shown, um, a woman in the, when they announced um, the next one, a woman in the crowd like put her hand up or something saying that she made that. And pretty much after that, the um, MC who had to do some of the modeling herself because one of the models was sick or something like that. Um, she, every time she went to present a garment, she would ask if the maker was in the crowd and if they were, she'd get them to stand up and give a little wave, which was so nice, I thought. Um, yeah, and there were, there was at least one person, probably more, that had multiple um, entries in the fashion show, which was really nice. Like. How good would you feel knowing that um, lots of your designs, not just one, had been picked to be presented? Um, actually, the ones that were presented were probably the winners. So yeah, that would yeah, that's such an amazing um, achievement. So I didn't note down that anyone's name because I was just gawking at all of the um, beautiful works. So. Yes, sorry, whoever you are um, who won all sorts of um, different categories and sorry to all of the other people as well. Um, but yeah, you all did amazing work. Thank you for that. Um, and thank you to the Sheep Show for putting on a show, <laughs> showing all of that. Um, next up is, yeah, after that, so I went um, browsing through the shed where that show was and I may be getting some things out of order but I'm pretty sure the first people that I met or the first people who found me um it was it was a really amusing incident actually I was like on my knees looking at some stuff in a stall like close to the ground and all of a sudden I hear a chorus of people saying Bobby 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 and I turn around um and right at the same moment, 
two different lots of people had spotted me um, and were trying to say hello. So just a funny coincidence that um, it all happened at the same time. And I was a bit like, hi, hi, who am I talking to first? Oh my gosh, it's so good to see you all. Hi, hello. <laughs> Um, so yeah, so they uh, were Ira of Cookie Knits, who I have mentioned many times on this podcast. She was with a couple of friends of hers. Oh, I should mention that um, a lot of my um, knitting friends from Sydney had come down, or from New South Wales had come down for the show. I believe um, there were nine of them that all came down together. Um which is amazing. And yeah, so Ira was with two other girls. Um, one is, one of them also has a podcast that I haven't, um, that I haven't watched, but I know of. Um, and that is Ellen, Elena of Simple Knits, I believe. And then the other friend was, um, she was actually featured in one of Ira's um, more recent episodes when she went to another yarn festival. So yeah, so Ira introduced me to them and we had a really brief sort of, um, really, really brief catch up. And then the other person who had saw me, who had saw me, who had seen me at the same time was Sarah, who was one of um, the instructors when I was taking a spinning class at the Guild last year. So that was really nice to see her there as well. Um, yeah. And then at some point, at some point while I was going around that big shed as well, I did spot Shara of Shara made um, and I went over and say hello but again um, I didn't take up too much of her time because she was there with um, her husband and her kids so yeah I didn't really want to intrude and yeah that's probably like the thing that um, I re would regret the most about this show is that it was all so busy that everyone who I did um, see I barely got to talk to so I do kind of feel like maybe next year um, maybe I will try to stay overnight in Bendigo and try to do the show over two days so that I'm not feeling so rushed I mean I'm not the only one who was rushed everyone was like you know trying to look at everything and see everything so yeah I don't know we'll see anyway What's that, my 50th tangent today? <laughs> um, yeah, so after that, I think it was after that, um, I went out of that shed and I was starting to look for the bathroom, but then I saw a message from Mel, who I had messaged that morning when I arrived, um, saying, I'm here, let me know when you guys are ready for a catch-up. Um, I'd so seen a message from Mel um, saying that they were all having lunch somewhere and I went so I went looking for them and it took me a while to find them but I found them and I said hello and um, so yeah so Mel was there with a lot of people um, and so one of them was Lisa of 111 windmills um, another one was um, Ben, who I follow on Instagram at Woven D Wonder Dog, um, who is a spinner um, and uh, a, a very prolific spinner, um, I would say, who mainly uses spindles, I believe, but I don't, I don't know. Sorry, Ben. <laughs> um, yeah, and there were a whole bunch of other people with them as well but um, I mainly was talking to Mel and again like I said it was a really brief catch-up um, this time the reason being because I was looking for the bathroom when I saw her message um, but I'd seen her message late and I hadn't wanted to miss out on um, seeing them and catching up with them so I went to find them first and then I had to be like sorry I've got to run do you know where the toilets are <laughs> um, yeah, and then after that I went 
and stood in a queue for quite a long time to get some lunch but it was delicious and when I did get my lunch I ate it um, where they had the fashion show set up because I think I'd gotten my lunch about 20 minutes before the second show was about to start so I nabbed myself a seat because there um, weren't like a whole lot of seats well there there were maybe like three four rows of seats but not enough for all of the people who want to see it anyway so i got myself a seat and i sat down to have lunch and i finished lunch and the second fashion show started so that show was um the australian woolcraft innovation show so that was more for um like more established fashion brands who um, were doing things with wool so uh, again oh did I take photos of this one I can't remember if I did I think I did um, but I also feel like I was more interested in um, uh, you know taking photos of um, the Woolcraft show than this show because I felt like the Woolcraft one was more special and probably more closer to my heart um, so yeah, but it was still a really good show, beautiful pieces. Um, yeah, so it was really nice to be able to make it to two of the shows. Last year, I didn't make it to any of the events. I just walked around. So, um, yeah, when I got there, I made sure to look at the times that those were happening so that I wouldn't miss them. So it was really great. And then there was one more big um shed for fiber craft that I hadn't walked around so I went around that but it was getting towards um the end of the day and the the vibe of the whole place was more feeling like things were starting to wrap up um so I I I didn't actually know when everything was going to close so I went around that shed a bit more quickly than I had all of the others that I'd looked at because I was worried that um, they'd all start packing up. And I think I probably didn't need to do that because um, there was probably still another hour or so at least. But yeah, I, I went through sort of quickly and I still found things to buy and I still saw a lot of beautiful things. So it's not like I really missed out. but. Um, yeah next year yeah that yeah anyway what am I saying next <laughs> um, yes so after that last shed I went into another shed where they had been doing shearing competitions all day and I watched that for a little bit um, that was really fun to see um, you know how they wrangle the sheep um, and then the the people who get the sheep and like not the sheep <laughs> who get the um the the wool that's been shorn and like fling it out and do all of the picking and of course because it was a race um they were all moving like really fast and going through everything really quickly and there was the commentator like um talking through everything and people in the crowd just like yelling out and cheering them on so it was a really great energy in there and it was really fun to see um yeah, and I was pretty tired by that point, so I didn't actually this time go around to um, the other end where they had all of the sheep. So again, if I go next year and if I spread it out over two days, then I should be able to see all of the fashion shows, do all of the shopping, um, see all of the sheep, maybe see some of the judging and maybe see some of the... Um, uh, the sheep dog mustering things because I didn't see any of that this time around and it would have been cool too but you know I still I had a really great day so yeah it was wonderful um yeah so like I said I was pretty tired um I had sort of planned to I have a cousin who lives in Bendigo and I'd let her know that I was going to be there and I was hoping to catch up with her at the end of the day before I went home. But I had to message her and say, I'm too tired. Um, maybe next year uh, I'll plan it a bit better so that I could can actually see her and her family. But yeah, so that that's it. That was um, the show, my experience of the show in a 
very big nutshell and now um i will happily show with share 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 and now i get to share with you all of the wonderful purchases that i made um i have a list here of um all of the things that I bought and there is just one stall that I didn't note down the name of that kind of had a random um, assortment of things including like vintage tools and yeah just all sorts of things but anyway you'll see that the very first stall that I saw is one that um, I knew I was going to look for I had purchased from them last year and um, I think I had said in my previous episode or somewhere that one of the things that I knew I wanted to get was another project bag or a notions pouch or something like that so I knew that I wanted to find crystal cat stitchery um, and they were the very first stall that I saw they were right at the entrance of the first tent that I walked into so that was already a marvelous start to the day and here it is so I bought this lovely shape um, bag I was gonna call it a pouch but it's um, a pretty big pouch and I think um, yeah it's definitely project bag size as you can tell if you compare it to the size of my head <laughs> so yeah um, oh before I show you the other thing that I bought um, Liz of Crystal Cat has the most amazing memory um as soon as she saw me and i said hello she said oh i don't have it with me but she said i remember you last year you bought a bag in this pattern and she um she pointed to a bag that had um a different shape design on it which was exactly the same fabric of the bag that i had bought from her last year so <laughs> that just completely blew my mind um wow liz wow wow <laughs> yeah um yeah that was amazing that was yeah she's incredible um yeah so anyway so i bought this lovely bag pouch from her and then the the pattern that I had seen her post on Instagram that I was actually hoping that would still be there and was, was this um, gorgeous one here. And um, I don't believe, I believe she only had pouches of this material. Otherwise, if she'd had a bag, I probably would have bought the bag as well. But I didn't realize that she also does custom orders. So she had um, this type of print um, that was a slightly different sort of like colorway and design that I also wanted but because she let me know that she does customs um, and she also has another type of drawstring bag that I really like um, I believe or I decided not to buy two of these pouches one in each of the designs so that I could order the second design in um, the drawstring bag um, she said she said it was a difficult fabric to get a hold of so fingers crossed I'll be able to get that but um, oh yeah, did I tell you? I don't think I did. This big one has a couple of pockets inside, which is super handy. And this little one here has, oh wow, I was going to say it doesn't really need pockets because it's so small, but it actually does. And it's going to be really hard to show you, um, hang on. Yeah, so it actually does have pockets. I'm going to try to well not try I'm going to turn it inside out so that you can see but um, so there is a bigger pocket there and then all of the rest of them are like like just nar little narrow ones so that you can put like a hook or some needles or something like that in there so that's really handy um, I don't even know if I noticed this on the day, but that's an that's a wonderful bonus to have in the patch. So, thank you again, Liz. Um, yeah, so that was my first purchase. Next up was the 
stall that um, sold a whole bunch of assorted things that I didn't get the name of and from them I bought this crochet hook which is a 10 mil one um, yeah I, I think I yeah I like I've done a few um, a couple of crochet projects that use like thicker yarn or lots of yarn held together using big needles and I've had big hooks and I've had to borrow hooks from my um, crochet friend Hannah so um, I have been trying to find my own big hooks um, yeah so I got that one and then the next purchase was um, so Tea Time Yarn Retreats and White Rabbit Handmade were sharing a stall so I got things from both of them from Tea Time Yarn Retreats I got this these stitch stoppers here um because i i have one set of stitch stoppers which i bought at the show last year and i have found so last year i think i was really much more of a monogamous knitter um and this year i am much more polygamous um, I have, I do have a few different projects going at the same time, so um, I felt like I needed or I wanted to get stitch stoppers enough. Um, I wanted to get more stitch stoppers so that each of my projects could have a pair. So I got that one, um, which is really lovely from Tea Time Yarn Retreats, and then from White Rabbit Handmade, I got this one here which is tiny little hearts i really wanted to find um a small um a small set a small set of stitch stoppers that i could use for smaller projects and smaller needles or yeah 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 smaller projects <laughs> anyway so i got that i got um this set here which i will probably attach to this i'm i think i'm probably gonna fill this with um what am i trying to say i think i will make this my um notions bag that i can just chuck into any project bag that i want to take out and about with me so that's gonna go in there um i definitely don't want to put this in with my keys and risk it getting um, all scratched up and damaged and stuff. So that's that. Um, does it say? Sorry about this noise. Let me um, let me open it up and then I can tell you what the sizes on it are. So there it is. And they are five, four, and three millimeter hooks on that. So that's excellent. Put that in. Fits into one of those little pockets very well. And then the last thing I got from White Hand, White Hand, White Rabbit Handmade is um, a set of keeper cords. So this one, it has does it say on it yeah so it has one long cord and then two shorter cords um, and this my favorite colors are blue and green so blue and green um, yeah so again that's just one of those things where it's 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 like with the stitch stoppers I could go through and obviously have gone through my knitting life so far without needing them because there are ways to get around needing them but um they do just you know make things that much easier um so why not <laughs> um so that's it from white rabbit white white rabbit handmade um and that is also it for all of the notions and accessories the rest of my purchases are yarn so the next stall that i purchased from was Jamo, J A M O, um, and I got from them. I got these two um, from actually all the yarn I bought from them is West Yorkshire Spinners. 
Um, so I did. I knew that I wanted to find um, some more sock yarn um, to make socks for my partner. So I sent him a photo of a couple of the colors that I was looking at, and he picked this one, um, which is called Autumn Leaves. And then I also got this um, DK one because I. I also like making DK socks and I think that this would also make a really nice pair of socks. So they are, um, hmm, I thought that it said, ah, right at the front. Um, so it's 75-25 wool nylon for that one there and it says 35% um, BFL. So um, does the DK one say? Hmm. The DK one just says 100% British wool. So that is possibly a blend of different shape. And that, I'm guessing, um, the other 40% is possibly some kind of blend as well. But yes, anyway. Socks. So those, and then the third yarn, um, the third West Yorkshire Spinners yarn that I got from them. I love, love, love the colorway. It is this here, um, Croft, and the colorway Stony Brick. Um, this was the last skein that they had of this, or else I would have bought more. I am tempted to go on their online stock store and buy um, enough of this to make a sweater but I feel like I should wait until I know exactly what I want to make with it um, and I'll probably look first to see if there is a pattern that I can make using just the one skein um, but it's just beautiful I love the colors of the flecks that are in it so that one there um, next is Oh, I lied. I forgot something. I said that all the other purchases were yarn, but I forgot about one more thing. Um, so I got this from Zigo Zago, which is, which is actually, I think, where Ira and Sarah found me. Um, but they had a shelf of um, secondhand magazines, I believe it was, that they were selling. And I have been looking for moon and turtle online um and this i bought for 25 bucks which i think is amazing the original price on it is 55 and i had actually nearly um bought one on ebay a little while ago that was that much or a bit more so i was so so pleased to find this copy this was the only copy for 25 bucks um and just as a wee little um, eye candy for you, the pattern that I have had on my queue that I want to make out of this is... Doo -doo 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 -doo. I mean, they have lots of lovely patterns, but um, it's called Lusky. That one there. Um, that's all black, so it's not a super great photo of it. But here we go. Yeah, that's the one I want to make. So actually, I do wonder now, it uses, it does use worsted weight yarn, so I could possibly actually make that using this and something else, but we'll see. Anyway, I'm not project planning while I'm li not live. <laughs> Anyway, next. Next. So that was from Zigo Zago. Um, and then the next thing I purchased was from Pearl Box. And that is this Oyster Yarns in the colorway Westerly. Um, this one is 70% Superwash BFL, 20% Silk, 10% Cashmere. Um, <clears throat> I, I really, when I saw these yarns there, I was really, really interested in working with this yarn blend. Um, I really like the composition of it, but I have a feeling again 
that maybe this was the last color way the the last one they had of this colorway I, otherwise i probably would have bought more because i'm finding right now that i'm not really liking purchasing single skeins because it really limits what i can do with it so i i'm not sure what i'm going to do with that one because i don't think it's quite enough to make like the cowl a, another cowl that i want to make um possibly gloves yeah, I'll have to have a think about that one, but it is so soft. It it feels so nice. I wish you could just like give that a squish with me. <laughs> it's so soft and beautiful. Um, yeah, so a lot of BFL. Did I tell you what this one is actually? It just says Shetland. Shet it's Shetland wool. So yeah, some BFL, some Shetland wool. And then the last purchase I made is from Yarn Barn. Um, and it is this here so it says on this label that it is lamb's wool angora lamb's wool and angora and i kind of wish now um like this was the very last thing that i bought and so it was at the end of the day i was starting to feel pretty tired and um I was kind of feeling a bit done so i didn't think to ask them where they source um their fiber from and I kind of wish I had checked that now because I do hope that it's ethically sourced fiber so yeah anyway aside from that it is a two-ply um, it's beautiful it is beautiful I love the color of it um, I love the uh, the haze that that angora is giving it and I know exactly what I'm going to use this for so in my previous episode I believe I mentioned that there was a shawl that I was thinking of making in a hundred percent cotton no no it's gonna be in this the only question now is whether I it's a lace shawl it's the Aeolian Chol, um, which is a free pattern. And it does, you, you I don't know if I want to use beads, basically. Um, so yeah, if you have made shawls with beads or if you've worn a shawl with beads, um, let me know what you think of how that feels and how that works and whether it's worth it. Part of me wants to try it for, um, cause just cause it's something that I haven't done before. So it's something new. Um, and I do think it will look beautiful with this, but beads can be expensive. And I think the pattern uses a lot of beads and I don't know if having beads all over the thing is going to det detract from the feel of the finished product. But yes, anyway, that is it. That is all of my purchases. So I will end this show as I usually do with Heartful of Craft. And obviously because um, this episode has been all about the Sheep and Wool Show, I am grateful for the Sheep and Wool Show. I am grateful that this big, wonderful um, event is happening annually in the state that I live in, um, which makes it really easy for me to go to. I feel really lucky in that. Um, I feel really lucky that um, it's such a varied and vibrant community of um, uh, farmers and makers and producers and, and everything that um, – can come together and put this wonderful show together so thank you for the show thank you to all of the vendors um thank you to everyone who shares their wonderful makes by submitting them into the wool craft and it was yeah it it was a really great day i am really glad that i went on the saturday because it really did have um a Mu yeah it had a it had a much more <sighs> i i felt like it there was a lot more energy than when i went on the friday last year um it had a um 
just a really sort of joyful vibe. Um, yeah, and it didn't feel overcrowded or anything like that. So yeah, it was just, it was just really great. If you have the chance to go next year, then I really, really recommend it. And I think that's all that I have to say. Um, thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you for putting up with all of my waffling and tangents about the show. I hope you've enjoyed hearing about my experience and seeing all of the wonderful things that I have um, bought from the lovely vendors who were there. And that's it. I look forward to seeing you in the next episode where I will be going back to my usual program of um, sharing my own crafting with you. That's it. Fairly well. Thank you.